lotus feet of my Shiksha and Diksha Guru. Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Asatara Sata Sri Simad Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Jai. Jai. Then I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Shiksha and Sanyas Guru. Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Asatara Sata Sri Simad Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Then I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my two Shiksha Gurus, Nitya Lira Prabhishta Om Vishnu Pad Asatara Sattva Sisimad, Srila Gaur Govinda Goswami Maharaj, and Srila Bhakti Vijayam Bharti Goswami Maharaj. I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of the Sri Rupanuga Guru Varga, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur Prabhupada, Srila Gorki Shordas Babaji, and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And I offer my humble obeisances unto Param Pujapad, Sri Prem Prayojan Prabhu, and to all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis who are present here today, my Dandavat Pranam. How many people are on Facebook? <laughs> so, some of you may be familiar on Facebook. Now, uh, they break out into random rantings and arguments, right? Different people, no, you're wrong, no, you're wrong. They argue about the silliest thing. So, I wanted to read something for you today, because we know that everyone's a devotee. All these devotees that are on Facebook, all the devotees that are here, devotees that we come in contact with, and yet sometimes we come into conflict with devotees. Why is that? And so, Kapila Dave in his teachings to his mother in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 29th chapter of the third canto, he describes different classes of devotees who are influenced by the modes of material nature. Which brings me to a Prabhupada story. <laughs> when I first got initiated by Srila Prabhupada when I got Hari Nam, back in July 29th, 1971. I had been in the movement for almost a year and a half. I wanted to get initiated earlier, but for some reason Prabhupada had gone to India for about a year or so, and he didn't come back right away, and then I couldn't get to see him right away. And so it worked out that I got to see him in July in Gainesville, Florida. And when I got my initiation from Srila Prabhupada, it was late at night. He had been on a whirlwind day of lectures and programs. He, he came from Jacksonville Airport and he arrived at the Gainesville Temple. He went right in. He gave a lecture, then he had massage and lunch, then he went to the program in the evening at the University of Florida, he gave this lecture about yoga and meditation and the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra at the University of Florida, and then right after that he went to the university television station and he did an interview and a lecture there, so it's three lectures in one day, Bravo was just going, 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 going. And then... <clears throat> You know, we they had, uh, Prabhupada had our beads, he had chanted on our beads, and we came to get the beads from him. And he gave each of us our beads. I remember entering the room, Prabhupada was sitting there. He had nothing on but a little gumsha. So, 
from the middle of his thighs down to his lotus feet, and the whole upper half of his body were completely open. And he was emitting this golden effulgence into the room that you could see all the way down the hall as you were approaching the room. And I was remembering how when I studied the teachings of uh, this uh, Casey, Edgar Casey, about auras and reincarnation, and he was saying that a person who has a golden aura is a descended master. So I, I was looking at Srila Prabhupada and I was thinking, wow, I'm getting initiated by a descended master. <laughs> 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 so, Srila Prabhupada gave us our beads and then he asked for questions and I said, I've been reading the Bhagavad Gita. So in the Gita, it talks about how the modes of material nature influence a person to act in certain ways and have certain uh, behaviors. I said, but at the same time, you say that when we're engaging in devotional service to you, we're on the transcendental platform. So I'm trying to understand how we're on the transcendental platform, that we're devotees, but yet we're influenced by the most of material nature. So he gave me this analogy. He said, it's just like being on a boat. He said, when you're on the boat, no one can say you're not on the boat. He said, but when the boat is crossing the ocean, sometimes there's great waves and storms and things, and the boat is getting rocked very difficult. And so you may be rocked on the boat. He said, but how will you learn to ply the boat smoothly through the storms? He said, you have to take direction from the captain, the guru. And the guru will teach you how to make the boat steady even in the most difficult waters. So even though you may be influenced by the material nature, while you're on the platform of devotional service, you'll be able to practice bhakti until the boat arrives home in the spiritual world. So he gave me this example, and I could understand that we could be devotees practicing devotional service, but yet we can still be influenced by the modes of material nature. So then later, of course, when I'm reading the Srimad Bhagavatam, Kapila Dev is explaining how devotees are influenced by Tamagun, Rajagun, Sattvagun, and then how we come to the Vishuddha Sattva. So it's very educational, it's something that when I've read it before to devotees, they find it to be very powerful information. And so I wanted to read a little bit of it and ex talk about it a little bit today to help you have a vision. So the eighth verse of the 29th chapter in the third canto reads, I'm just going to read the, go right to the English so that we don't take up too much time. Devotional service executed by a person who is envious, proud, violent, and angry, and who is a separatist, is considered to be in the mode of darkness or the mode of ignorance, tamagun. So, in the second half of the purport, Srila Prabhupada says, one who approaches the Supreme Lord to render devotional service, but who is proud of his personality, envious of others, or vengeful, is in the mode of anger. He thinks that he is the best devotee. Devotional service executed in this way is not pure. It is of, it is mixed and is of the lowest grade, tamasha. So when you find yourself in the association of a devotee who has these kinds of attitude, my vision of bhakti is the best vision. My idea of Krishna is the best idea. You don't understand. You're in maya. You don't know. Or you're with this, or you're with that, or you're doing this, or you're doing that, or you know, so many critical reasons. Huh? But still, he accepts that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. He's chanting Hare Krishna. He's pra practicing, even though he has some misunderstanding 
about the fact that everybody is performing devotional service. So Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur advises that a Vaishnava who's not of good character should be avoided. A Vaishnava is one who's taken the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the ultimate goal of life, but if one is not pure and still has motives, then he is not a Vaishnava of the first order of good character. One may offer his respects to such a Vaishnava because he has accepted the Supreme Lord as the ultimate goal of life. But one should not keep company with a Vaishnava who is in the mode of ignorance. So if you find that the association of devotee, because he's, he's very angry, he's very proud, that his particular view or vision of bhakti is the correct vision and there's no other vision and we shouldn't listen to anybody else or this or that or whatever thing that he convolutes in his mind, then you offer respect. Yes, you're a Vaishnava, my respect to you, but you don't associate with that person. You avoid that association. The worship of the deities in the temple by a separatist with a motive for material enjoyment, fame, and opulence is devotion in the mode of passion. So Prabhupada talks about the word separatist because it's used in both verses. In the, in the first verse, it's called Bina Drik, one Sanskrit phrase, Bina Drik. And then in this verse, it's called Pritak Bhava. So he said, these Sanskrit words in this connection are Bina Drik and Pritak Baba, and a separatist is one who sees his interest as separate from that of the Supreme Lord. Mixed devotees, or devotees in the modes of passion and ignorance, think that the interest of the Supreme Lord is supplying the orders of the devotee. You have to think about this, and you'll see that there are devotees that have this sort of mentality. Okay. The interest of such devotees is to draw from the Lord as much as possible for their sense gratification. This is the separatist mentality. Actually, pure devotion, which is explained in the previous chapter, the mind of the Supreme Lord and the mind of the devotee should be dovetailed. They become one. A devotee should not wish anything but to execute the desire of the Supreme. That is oneness. When the devotee has an interest or a will different from the interest of the Supreme Lord, his mentality is that of a separatist. When the so-called devotee desires material enjoyment without reference to the interest of the Supreme Lord, or the devotee wants to become famous or opulent by utilizing the mercy or grace of the Supreme Lord, he is in the mode of passion. And so we see there are people like this, like in India, that there's different groups that are now building these huge temples here and there in India. And they see, we have this big temple. See, so many people are coming to our temple. See, we are collecting more money than other people. But devotion is not measured by this. Bhakti is not measured by how large the building is or how many thousands of people are coming to take darshan of that deity or how many millions of rupees are being collected, or how many so-called miracles one is performing. All these things are irrelevant, irrelevant. This is not a way to attract someone to Krishna consciousness. You attract someone by sincere devotion. Srila Prabhupada performed several miracles but there was something that he kept very private, very quiet, not something that he publicized. Because he said, this is not my mission. My mission is not to cure people's bodies. <laughs> my mission is to cure the mentality that they're not, that they, they think that they're this body and that they should understand that they're the soul. That's my mission. So these things should be understood very carefully. The devotees who promote this kind of thing, well, our temple is bigger, or we get more money, or we get more people who come, or something like that. You know, they're devotees because they're worshiping Krishna. We offer them respect. But we don't associate so much with these people. 
Now, in the tenth verse, he talks about devotion in the mode of goodness. When a devotee worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead and offers the results of his activities in order to free himself from the inebriates of fruit of activities, his devotion is in the mode of goodness. Now, this is a very significant point that's going to be made here because within the concept of Vanashram, Prabhupada talks about the Brahmins, Chatriyas, Vaishyas, and Sudras, along with the Brahmacharyas, Grihastas, Vanapratas, and Sannyasis, are members of the eight divisions of Varna and Ashrama, and they have their respective duties to perform for the satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When such activities are performed and the results are offered to the Supreme Lord, they are called Karmapanam, duties performed for the satisfaction of, Lord, of the Lord. If there is any inebriety or fault, it is atoned for by the offering process. So this is in practical application of what we do in Vaidhi Bhakti. We are living within our particular ashram, our particular varna, whatever it may be. We try to offer the fruit of our activities to the Lord. And some of the negativity of the process uh, for the faults that are performed in that are removed. But if the offering process is in the mode of goodness rather than pure devotion, then the interest is different. Now what is the difference? That's a very significant point. And Srila Jiva Goswami addresses this point in his Bhakti Sandarbha. Srila Jiva Goswami has stated that of the six symptoms of surrender to embrace the guardianship of the Lord, Gotripta Varnam, is central since total surrender expresses the same ideal. The remaining five symptoms of accepting the favorable, rejecting the unfavorable, faith in the Lord's protection, full surrender, and humility are natural contributing associates of this ideal, associate servitors to, this, this, to the ideal of Gopchitavarna. And then he gives the quote in Sanskrit here. This is from Srila Sridhar Maharaj's Prapanam Jivanam Rita. Surrender is the foundation of the world of devotion. It is the very life and essence. One cannot enter into that domain without surrender. It must be present in every form of service. And to attempt divine service without it will be mere imitation or lifeless formality. In other words, when you're doing service, the first thing is to offer yourself. First you offer yourself, then whatever you do is offered to Krishna. But to offer the item as, as, as and expect some of the fruit, that's that's an inebriety. That's a that's a problem in the in the in the process of offering. It's not that okay, here's here's I I've, I've cooked this feast, I'm offering it to Krishna, he gets some, I get some. Wanting some portion of the fruit is is a defect in the in the offering process. First, you offer yourself. Okay, go to Tavarna. You are my guardian. I am your ward. Whatever it is you want me to do, I'll do, even if it's the most impossible thing. And then you offer. You offer in that mood, in that consciousness. Sri Sridhar Swamipad, meaning the original commentator on the Srimad Bhagavatam, has stated that only if the practices of devotion are initially offered to the Supreme Lord can they be recognized as devotion. To attempt to execute them and subsequently offer them cannot be pure devotion. What is Iti Navanalakshani Yatsya Sa? In other words, the nine processes. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, etc. They should be first, you offer yourself and you offer them without surrender. The activity will be adulterated with exploitation, renunciation, artificial meditation, karma, jnana, or yoga, and so on. So this is the point. You don't want devotion just in the mode of goodness. You want to get beyond that. You want to get beyond Vaidhi, you want to get to Raganuga, you want to get to spontaneous love, you want to get to pure devotion. 
Madguna Shruti Matrena Mai Sarve Guhasyase. The manifestation of unadulterated devotional service is exhibited, exhibited when one's mind is at once attracted to hearing the transcendental name and qualities of the Supreme Personality of God. This is Raghavuga, who is residing in everyone's heart. Just as the water of the Ganges flows naturally down towards the ocean of devotional uh, the ocean, such devotional ecstasy, uninterrupted by any material condition, flows towards the Supreme Lord. The basic principle of this unadulterated devotion, Prabhupada is saying in the purport, pure devotional service in love of Godhead. Madguna Shruti Matrena means just after hearing about the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, these qualities are called nirguna. They have no material qualities. No tama, raja, or sattva. The Supreme Lord is uncontaminated by the modes of material nature. Therefore, he is attracted to the pure devotee. There is no need to practice meditation to attain such attraction. The pure devotee is already in the transcendental stage and the affinity between him and the Supreme Personality of God it is natural, and it is compared to the Ganges water flowing towards the sea. The flow of Ganges water cannot be stopped by any condition. Similarly, a pure devotee's attraction for the transcendental name, form, and pastimes of the Supreme Godhead cannot be stopped by any material condition. The word avicina, without interruption, is very important in this connection. No material condition can stop the flow of devotional service in of a pure devotee. And this is talked about in the Anya, now he talks about the Anya Bilashita Shunyam verse from uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is actually coming from Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, because it talks about how devotional service, Shulam Narayamars used to give the example, he said it's like honey dripping from the Pot and it just it's an uninter uninterrupted stream, an uninterrupted stream, and the word a haituki without reason, a pure devotee does not render loving service to the personality of God for any cause or for any benefit. There's no I something for you, something for me. This is the first symptom of unalloyed devotion. So. This is just a brief overview. I don't want to spend too much time because we're here to listen to Prabhu, but I wanted to give you an overview of these four verses, and there's something that you should study. It's the third canto, 29th chapter, verses 8, 9, 10, and 11, and 12, actually, 11 and 12 together. And by reading these purports of Srila Prabhupada and trying to understand them uh, carefully, uh, one can make great advancement in understanding how to practice devotional service without being influenced by those modes of material nature. How one can steady the boat on the ocean of material nature and bring it home to the spiritual world. I hope that helps you a little bit in your process of understanding bhakti. Hare Krishna. Nama Shrista Manamapi Shachiputram Atras Rupam Rupam Tasyagajamuri Purim Maturim Goshtuatim Radha Kun Tasmai Mahaprema Rasapradaya 
First of all, I offer my Sastang Dandavat Puspanjali, my heart like flowers thousands of times, at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadiya Paramarada Tama Guru Pada Padma, Nityalila Pravisht Om Vishnu Pada, Ashtotara Satasi, Rupanuga Charivarya, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to Param Pujapad Sri Bhaktivedanta Bhagavad Maharaj and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. There is a, a famous Sanskrit proverb Dananjaye Hataka Sampariksha Maharane Shastapritam Pariksha Vipatikale Grihini Pariksha Vidyavatam Bhagavate Pariksha It means that there are ways to test or to ascertain the quality of different things. If you want to know whether gold is pure gold, then how do you test it? Dananje Hatakasam Pariksha in fire. By putting the gold in fire, then you'll discover whether this is 24 karat gold or not, or whether it's pure. Maharane Shastubritam Pariksha. How do you know if a warrior is really a great warrior? The test comes in battle. Then you can see in the battlefield who is really a great warrior. Vipatikale Grihini Pariksha. How does a person know whether their wife is a good wife or not? <laughs> <laughs> Vipatikale. When some crisis comes in your life, when you become penniless, when you become ill, 
when some disaster or calamity strikes, at that time, then a man discovers whether or not his wife is a good wife. Vipattikale grihini pariksha. And how is it tested? Huh? The extent, the quality of a person's knowledge. Vidyabhatam, who is a scholar? Really a learned person. Bhagavate pariksha. Only one measure. How they know Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> Why is that? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught Krishna Bhakti Rasa Swarup Sri Bhagavata, Son of Aveda Shastra Hariti Paramahat. Of all the Vedic literature, Srimad Bhagavatam is the best. Because it is Krishna Bhakti Rasa Swarup, it is in the embodiment of transcendental devotion in its intense and relishable form of Bhakti Rasa. It is directly see Krishna himself. In fact, Shukadev Goswami, in the, when he begins to explain the significance of this Katha, he said, Pibantiyei Bhagavata Atmana Satham Katham Ritam Sravana Puteshu Sambritam Punanti Te Vishaya Vidushita Ashayam Brajanti Tatcharana Sororu Hantika. Krishna became so ecstatic, his peacock fed is falling off. <laughs> <laughs> so Radhika's dasis are coming and fixing it. Jai Jai Sri Radhe. Oh, Pibanti Ye Bhagat Atmana Sotam. If a person will drink the nectarian katha about Bhagavan and Bhagavat Atmana Satam, Satam means the devotees, and those devotees are Bhagavat Atman. They are Krishna's heart. They are Krishna's soul. He cannot live without them. They have such a relationship. When Durvasa Rishi was begging Lord Narayan for mercy. Please give me mercy. Your chakra is trying to kill me. Eh? Lord Narayan said, no. He said, don't you have any mercy for me in your heart? He said, yes, you are correct. Mercy comes from the heart. But my heart does not live with me. It lives with my devotee, Ambarish Maharaj. Mm -hmm. eh? So the, this is why Krishna's mercy comes from the devotees because, do, do, because mercy comes from the heart and the devotees have stolen see Krishna's heart. It is with them. So if a person will hear the beautiful katha of the relationship between Sri Krishna and his devotees, then what will happen? Here he said, drink through the ears. Sravana puteshu sambritam. If you drink liquid, after some time you get full. But the ears, you can drink and drink there, you never become full. <coughs> and it is Katamrita. Katamrita sravana puteshu sambrita. Katamrita means immortal nectar. The nectar of the demigods, we cannot compare it with this nectar of Srimad Bhagavatam. <coughs> The nectar of the demigods, if you drink it, then your piety goes down. Because you have done good karma in order to taste that. So the more you taste it, the more your piety goes down. Not only that, but it makes one become lusty and then you want to have a relationship with Ramba and Urvashi and Menaka and all the Apsaras in the court of Indra. <laughs> huh? So this Amrita is not valuable. <clears throat> but the Kata Amrita, the nectar of Harikata, it's Punati te visha vidushita ashayam. Here ashay means the innermost region of the heart. Maharaj was just quoting the verse. Madguna sruti matrina mai sarva guhashaye. When a person simply hears about my qualities, Supreme Lord is saying, I am living ashay in the heart of that person. And when his mind, manogatera vichina, without any obstacle, just by hearing about me, it comes running towards my lotus feet. 
like the Ganges goes to the ocean. Then, Lakshanam Bhakti Yoga Sya Nirguna Udarita. Ahoitikiya Pavarita Sa Bhakti Purushottame. That is called Nirgun Bhakti. So here it is said that the conditioned souls in this world, they are Vishaya Vidushit Ashaya. The innermost region of their heart, their subconscious mind, their chitta is vidushit. That means polluted, contaminated with the many impressions of worldly enjoyment. And attachment, what is attachment? Attachment simply means that one of those impressions from a previous enjoyment has now come into your conscious mind and you want to repeat that experience. You see? So the impressions of sense gratification uh, condemn us to try again and again uh, to search out the objects of the senses and become attached and entangled in them. So the heart is uh, polluted by all these impressions. But punanti te vishaya vidushita shayam simply by drinking this nectar of Krishna Kata through the ears, then all these impressions become washed away. The heart becomes neat and clean. And when the heart is clean, then one can see the lotus feet of Krishna. Brajanti tach charana sororu hantikam. When the devotee's heart is purified by this flow of nectar of Harikata, then that flow of nectar carries him directly to the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. So this is the power of Kata. This is the meaning of the word Kata. Kata. Ka means kam. Kam means anandam. Ananda surupam. Ka means the embodiment of all bliss, Sri Krishna. And tha means tapayati, that which establishes. Stira starpayati, which permanently establishes. That which by hearing permanently establishes the anandas, the joyful swarup of Sri Krishna in your heart is called <coughs> kata. <coughs> that is kata. <coughs> so that is the potential of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. What is the Patipadya Vishai? What is it which is established as the goal of Srimad Bhagavatam? That is only praying. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught Aradya Bhagavan Brajeshatavanayas Taddama Brindavanam Ramyakachi Tupasana Braja Budu Bargena Yakapita. Srimad Bhagavatam Pramanam Amalam Premo Pama pur, uh, Prema Pumato Maha Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matadam Tatradara Napara. I have the highest respect to, for the opinion of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is that Brajanda Dandan Shama Sunda, the, the son of the king of Braja, Sri Krishna, is the supreme object of our worship. And as Krishna is to be honored, the dust of his dam, Braja Bhumi, is not different from him and to be worshipped also. Giraj Govardhan, Jamuna Devi, the forest of Vrindavan, Sham Kund, Radha Kund. And what, if he is to be worshipped, how is he to be worshipped? Ramyaka Chedu Pasna Braja Vudu Bhagena Yakalvita. The method of worship or service expressed by the gopis of Vrindavan is supreme. How do you know? Srimad Bhagavatam. Pramanam Amalam, mm -hmm. the immaculate Praman proof of all of these points is Srimad Bhagavatam, which describes the goal of life. Prema Pumato Mahan. Mm -hmm. The greatest goal is pray. Only pure transcendental love. Mm -hmm. Only this pure love can attract Sri Krishna. And it comes by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srila Rupa Goswami has, has said in describing the angles of bhakti. Srimad Bhagavatam Aswado Rasikai Saha Sajataya Shaisnigde Sadhu Sangha Soto Bari. The meaning is Srimad Bhagavatam. One should taste the many, many meanings of each word and each syllable of Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna Tulya Bhagavata Vibhu Savasrai Prati Sloke Prati Akri Nana Artikai. Chaitanya Mahapu said that. In every verse, no, in every letter of Srimad Bhagavatam, there are many meanings. So, Asvadora Sikai Saha, 
one should taste those meanings of Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of Braj Rasik Vaishnavas. Hmm. And especially Rupanuga Vaishnavas, those who are following outwardly and also internally Srila Rupa Goswami part. Why? Sajataya Shesnikde Sadhu Sangha Suthobare. Sadhu Sangha means to associate with one who is significantly more advanced than ourselves in realization. Bare. And Snigta. Snigta means that, that we should have such a relationship with that person. That they have made a sankalpa, they have made a vow in their heart. Oh, you are my Kripa Patra. Means you are the you will be the recipient of my compassion. So if we can serve Vaishnava in such a way that in their heart they make such a sankalpa, mm. then that is called the snigdha sangha, affectionate association. Veta tvam somya tat sarvam tat pratas tad nugrahat varu yusnigdhasasasya guru vogu yamapiyata. Shonika Rishi and the sages approached Sutta Goswami and they said to him, oh, you are the most learned and eldest Vedantist in our assembly. And because you are a very affectionate disciple, you have so much love for your Guru and your Gurus have so much love for you, then without a doubt, we know for sure, Guyam Apyapiyata, that your gurus have infused the confidential realization within your heart. So we are requesting, please instruct us. Tam Nasandashi to Datra Dustaram Nirstatistatam Kalim Satvaharam Punsam Karnadara Ivanavam. O Sutu Goswami. We think that we have met with you by great fortune to accept you as the captain of the ship to take us across this terrible ocean of Kali Yuga which deteriorates all the good qualities of human beings. Even if people have good qualities, gradually, gradually they lose them in the contaminated atmosphere of this time. But if we can meet the captain of a ship, Karnadara, who will guide our boat across the ocean of material existence and bring us to the lotus feet of Sri Krishna through the medium of Harikata, Varajanti Tatscharna Sororuhantikam, then we are greatly, greatly fortunate. So try to be in the shelter of Shuddha Vaishnavas and don't let your mind wander here and there in other things. Be absorbed in the Katamrita. Nectar of Sri Krishna Kata. So Snigda, the Sadhu Sangha should be significantly more advanced and realized, should be very affectionate to us. And Sajataya Asha is Snigda again for the third time in our discussion. Asha. Asha. It means the, the Chitta, the innermost region of the consciousness. It should be Sajataya Asha is Snigda. That that person from whom we are hearing, the, in the innermost region of their heart uh, should be perfected in the type of loving service that we want to attain. You see? Because Yasya Satsangat Ipungsa Manipatsya Satadgunai Sakula Dhyata Todinam Sayuta Neva Sangstrayest. Our chitta, our consciousness is like Spotika Mani, a crystal. If you place a crystal, on uh, a blue velvet cushion, it will reflect the, the blue light here and there. If you put the same crystal on a red velvet cushion, it will reflect red light here and there. So our heart is like a crystal. With whom we associate will become like that. If we associate with worldly minded persons, then it will compound, it will reinforce, it will accentuate our bodily conception of life. And if we'll associate with pure Vaishnavas, then it will uh, reinforce and compound our spiritual conception of life. And among the Vaishnavas, if we associate with those who are in the mood of the resonance of Vaikuntha, serving Lakshmi Narayan, then the love will come. 
but per permeated and predominated by a sense of opulence, awareness of God's opulences. If we'll associate with Sakkaras, then this mood of coward boys will come. If we associate with those in Vatsaliras, a mood like Madhi Yashoda will come. And if we associate with those who are very strictly, outwardly and inwardly following Srila Rupa Goswami, then a mood like Rupa Manjri will begin to manifest in the heart while we are hearing. There and then, while we are hearing Harikata, that mood will be awakened in the heart. So Srila Rupa Goswami Pad is saying, Seek out the like-minded association and hear them. And then Bhakti will... Is, Bhakti is very fine, very subtle. When the heart is overcrowded with very gross impressions, you cannot even detect it. But if the heart is a little cleansed by the chanting of the holy names, by Harinam Sankirtan, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Then in Sadhu Sangha, we can begin to detect the very subtle rays of Ladini Shakti, the divine transcendental pleasure potency. And when this comes to our heart, then Krishna becomes attracted to us. And bhakti, this bhakti, this very fine and sweet pleasure potency of Sri Krishna, which is transferred through sadhu sangha, especially through the hearing process and service, this is the only thing that attracts Krishna. See, Krishna is not attracted by anything else. No worldly qualification at all. Hmm? In Padyavali there, Srila Rupa Goswami has given Vadyasya Taranam Dravasya Chavayo Vidyad Gajendra Saka Kub Jaya Kimunam Rupa Madikam Kim Tat Sudam No Dhanam Bangsa Ko Bidurasya Yaravapate U Grasya Kim Purusham Bhaktya Tushati Kevalam Natu Nacha Gunair Bhakti Priyo Madhava. This is the name of Krishna. Bhakti Priyo Madhava. Krishna's name is Madhava. And what is dear to him? This transcendental devotion. He's very dear to him. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. And if someone will say, Oh, but I have to have a very strict sanachar. Like a Bhakta Vedic Brahmin. Mm -hmm. This is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So Srila Rupa Goswami is saying, Vadyasyacharanam. Where is this Adhachar? A Byad. Byad here means the one butcher. There was a butcher. His name was Dharma. But he was a butcher. He lived in Matilla. And the whole day he was there in his butcher shop cutting up animals and he was all covered in blood. Hmm? So once there was a Brahmin named Kaushik and he became very proud that he's following all Sadhachar. And during the Pasaran, he had Brahmin Brahminical tejas from this. But the well wisher told him, You don't understand the essence of spiritual life. If you want to know the essence of spiritual life, go to Matilla. There's one butcher there. He can teach you. Then he was surprised. <laughs> A butcher? Who teach me? <laughs> Let me go and see. So he traveled very far and he came to Mithila and he came to the butcher shop. Oh, is your name Dharma? Uh, yes, sir. How can I help you? I have been sent by a well-wisher to learn about the essence of spiritual life from you. But please wait. I'll be, I've almost finished. So he finished cutting up his last chickens and different things. And then he washed his hands and he went to his home and he took that Brahmin with him. And when he got home, he changed out of his bloody cloth and put on clean white cloth and tilak. And he was looking now very fresh and effulgent. And he went, his old parents, they were very old, and he came and he bowed down with great love at the feet of his parents and his parents blessed him. And then he was doing his puja. And remembering his mantras, remembering his Ishtadev. 
And he gave instruction to Kaushik, that Brahman. And then Kaushik realized, oh, because in Vedic time, there was not so much social mobility. So the job that you had is the job that you inherited from your forefathers. So though himself, he never used to kill the animals. The hunters kill the animals and then bring the catch from the forest to the butchers. The butchers would just skin them and prepare them to give to the, those who ate meat. So it was a very low, low class job. But he himself personally never killed any animal. But it was just that was his karma in that life that he was born in that despicable position. But still, despite that, he served his old parents and he had a good heart and he used to chant the holy name. And by the mercy of Sadhu Sangha and the power of the holy name, some love came in his heart. And Krishna loved that butcher. So, Vyadhyasya Taranam, if someone said, oh, the most important thing is to have a sadhachar, then we say, oh, what did he have? But he had bhakti. Vyadhyasya Taranam, Durvasa Chavayor, someone may say, only old people can understand the transcendental spiritual truth. Really? Durvasya Chavayor, what about Dhruva Maharaj? He was only five years old. Only five years old. So age is not a qualification. Because he followed the instructions of his Guru Pada Padma, Sri Narada Muni. So by the blessing of his Gurudev, this very fine and subtle pleasure potency of Sri Krishna Bhakti came in the heart of Dhruva Maharaj. And Supreme Lord himself came there, riding on the back of Guruda and blessed him. So bhakti tusuti kevalam nacha gunair. Bhakti priyo madhava. Krishna is only satisfied by devotion, not by any worldly qualities. Vadyasya charanam durvasya chavayo vidya gajenta asika. What about vidya? Don't you have to have so much vidya knowledge? Hmm? Rupa Goswami said, gajenta asika. What about gajendra? He was an elephant. Hmm? Was gajendra a learned scholar? No, he was just an elephant. But at that moment when he was about to die, he wasn't even praying to be liberated from the jaws of the crocodile. But he just took a lotus flower in his trunk and held it up and said, Oh my Lord, I make this offering to you. It, myself I offer to you. This is very important. Mm. Maharaj was speaking about how mm, in, the, in the Sattva Gun, then you offer your activities to see Krishna. But this is Sattvic, this is not transcendental. What is transcendental? You don't have to offer anything. Because that person is offering things for Krishna, he has the Pratak Drisha, a vision of separation. I am offering something to him. But in your Bhakti, you have given yourself. You are offering things, but what about you? Have you offered yourself? In pure bhakti, you have done the Atmani Vedan. Your heart has been given to Krishna. So you don't have to do things and offer them. Everything that you do is already Mahaprasad because you have given yourself. Just like a, a servant of a king. The servant of a king is bringing some food to the king. He's fanning the king. He's bringing clothes to the king. So is he offering food to the king? Is he offering clothes to the king? The food is the king's food. The clothes are the king's clothes. He's just taking the things that already begun, be, belong to the king and bringing them to him. So what is the question of offering? So Nirgun Bhakti is like that. Everything already belongs to Krishna. Even myself. Nothing to offer. Hmm? Only there is Seva. Hmm? And that Seva is not tied up in the by the rules and regulations of Vaidhi Bhakti, the Bhav Seva, the internal Bhav Seva, is not tied up by the rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. So, Vidya Gajendra Sikha, what knowledge did Gajendra have? But Bhakti appeared in his heart. Kubja Yaki Marupa Adikam. And what about Kubja? Someone may say, Oh, I am not so beautiful or healthy. You don't have to be physically beautiful or healthy or anything. Kubja was a hunchback. 
There were so many ladies in Mathura all looking at Krishna and attracted to him. But Krishna never went to their house. To whose house did he go? To Kubja. Because Kubja very lovingly came to him and offered to Krishna and Balaram the fragrant ointments, sandalwood paste mixed with kasturi and other colors. So Krishna and Balaram, they took the ointments which were in contrast to their own complexions. So because Balaram was fair, he took the dark blue sham color ointments. And because Krishna is sham color, he took the golden ointments. And when he smeared the golden ointment on his body, it was as if his inner mood was coming out. Because Krishna, even in Mathura, is always remembering Radhika. And when he smeared the golden ointment on his body, he felt as if Radhika in his heart was manifesting. So Kubja in her next life became Kashi Mishra. And Krishna in his next life stayed in the house of Kashi Mishra, that is the Gambira in Jagannath Puri. Mm. When his mood completely came out. Uh, his attachment to Radharani became prominent in that Gora Lila. So Kubja ya ki munam rupa madikam kim tat sudam dhanam sudam no dhanam Someone may say, what service can I do? I don't have any money. I have no money at all. But what money did Sudama, Sudama Brahmin? He was very poor, he had nothing at all. And even he didn't want anything. But he captured the heart of Sri Krishna by his selfless devotion. Bangsa hmm? with Rasya. What someone may say, but I am I am very low born. I am not born in a Brahmin family or in an aristocratic family. Hmm? So Rupa Goswami is saying Vangsa kau vidarasya. What about Vidura? Vidura is the son of a maidservant. But still, when Duryodhan invited Krishna to come to his house and pre prepare a huge feast in gold and silver utensils, but Krishna didn't go there. See, Krishna, uninvited, went to the house of Vidura. Why did he do that? Because this very fine energy, the Samvit Ladini sa Bhakti Shakti Bhav. The energy of devotion was in the heart of Vidura and pulled on the heartstrings of Krishna and brought him to his home. Bangsa Kao Vidarasya Dyadava Pate Ugrashikin Paurasham. Someone may say, but you have to be very mm, energetic and powerful, a king. But what about Ugrasain? Where was the heroism and the prowess of a Katri and a king in Ugrasain Maharaj? Ugrasain Maharaj's wife, Padmavati, was violated by a demon, Drumal Danav. And as a result of this, she became pregnant and the son was Kamsa. And Ugrasain Maharaj raised the son of a demon as his own son. How embarrassing is this for a Katriya king? And not only that, but when he came of age, he beat his father and put him in prison and sat on his father's throne and usurped the kingdom. Yeah. So as far as being a powerful Katriya who will go down in history as being having great prowess and heroism, Ukrasen is an embarrassment. But when Krishna came to Mathura and killed Kamsamaras, now Krishna has the right to sit on the throne. But what did he do? He took the Raj Tilak and gave it to Ugrasen Maharaj put Ugrasen Maharaj on the throne and bow down at his feet. Oh, your majesty, I am your loyal subject. And then when uh, Krishna transferred all the residents of Mathura to Dwarka, Ugrasen is the king of Dwarka. We call Krishna Dwarkadish, but actually he's not the king of Dwarka. Ugrasen is the king. Krishna is a prince in the, in the uh, Yadu dynasty. And he's the sub, one of the subjects under the control of Ugrasain Maharaj. Hmm? Why? Why? Bhaktya tushati kevalam nachagunair bhakti priyo madhava. Because, see, Krishna is only satisfied by devotion, not by any worldly qualities. All these personalities from the worldly perspective, they were quite uh, destitute and failures. But their lives were successful. Because they have devotion. So, Yasham Vaishurumanayam Krishna Paramapurashay 
bhakti utpajate pungsa shoka moha bayapaha. Simply by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, then this energy of bhakti awakens in the heart. It destroys all lamentation, bewilderment, and fear, and attracts the bumblebee of Sri Krishna to the fragrance of one's lotus heart. So the purpose of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam is praying. Only pure love. What is love? Srila Rupa Goswami Pati said, Samyan Masrinita Swanto Mamata Tishayankita Bhavasa Eva Sandatma Budai Prema Nigatite. It means when the heart which has been softened in the stage of Bhav completely melts and becomes imbued with ex intense, excessive feelings of possessiveness. Oh, Shamsunda, oh, Gopal, you are mine. And this intense feeling of possessiveness for Sri Krishna also, this love causes Sandra Nanda Visheshatma, condensed bliss. That is called praying. Otherwise, it is also said in Shastra, Ananya Mamata Vishnu, Mamata Prema Sangata, Bhakti Ityutate, Bhishma, Pralad Udhava Naradai. All the great authorities like Pralad, Bhishma, Udhav, and Narad, they have said that Prem means Ananya Mamata Vishnu. One pointedness, pos one pointed possessiveness for the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. And as one feels Mamata possessiveness for Sri Krishna, one also feels Mamata for everything connected with him. My Giriraj Govardhan, my Jamuna, my Seva Kunj, my Nidhuvan, my Radha Kunj. So this is Prem. And the nature of Prem is Sarvata Dwang Sarahita Satyapi Dwang Sakarane Yad Bhava Bandana Yuna Sa Prema Parikirtita. Even if all obstacles are there to impede the flow of this love, but this love can never be broken. Yet bhava bandhanam you know. It is a, a bondage of emotion that can never be broken. Atmendriya priti vancha taribali kaam krishnendriya priti icha dhari prema naam. The desire to please one's own senses. This is called kaam, lust. But the spontaneous, causeless desire only to please the senses of Gopinath, Radha Kanta, Sham Sundar. Mm, this is called praying. And the wonderful thing about this praying is that Prema Rasubhava Jaham Prema Rasambandha Say Mani Krishna Mora Nahi Prema Ganda Whenever there's a true relationship of love, then that person always feels that I have no love at all. Mm? It doesn't make one proud. The prem is the cause of humility and the humility is the cause of prem. Karya, karna, dekshite. They are mutually the cause and effect of each other. Mm -hmm. So this is the potency of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. One hears with faith, then this powerful energy of prem comes into the heart and Krishna becomes under the control of that. Mm -hmm. Once Madhu Manga he asked his grandmother, Purnamasi Devi, what is the nature of this love? Because his best friend, Krishna, had just fallen in love. <laughs> and Madhu Mangas says, he's acting so strange. <laughs> Why does he always want to go out into the forest? It's full of dangerous demons. Why don't we just stay in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Mother shoulders there, Rohini Maya's there, <laughs> making so many preparations. <laughs> what, Krishna, why do you want to go out into the forest all the time? <laughs> huh? Krishna says, oh, Madhu Mango, look at these trees. The, the branches are touching like the fingertips of a hero and heroine. <laughs> the birds in the trees are whispering as if the trees are whispering to each other. <laughs> <laughs> trees are confining everything. <laughs> <laughs> huh? said, what happened to my friend? So he asked his grandmother, hmm, what is the nature of this love? Purnamasi Devi said, Stotram yatr tastatam prakadyat chittas siddhate bratam ninda api pramadam prayatsiti parihasasriyam vibrati 
दोषेना शैतम गुणेन गुरुथम केन पिनाथन्वति प्रेम नास्वार सिकस सिकस दिदम विक्रीडति प्रक्रिया शी सेड दैट दिस लव इज वेरी कॉन्ट्ररी इन नेचर जस्ट एज वन हु हैज प्रेम थिंक्स ही हैज नो प्रेम एंड वन हु हैज प्रेम इज द ग्रेटेस्ट बट ही थिंक्स दैट ही इज द लोएस्ट सो प्रेम की नदी सदा उल्टा बहिदा दिस इज सेड दैट द द रिवर ऑफ लव flows in opposite direction usually rivers flow down this river is flowing up it's very strange it makes everything makes viparya it makes the viroda it's full of contradictions so she said stotram yatra tatastham prakadyat chittasidate vitam usually if a person respects you and speaks some praise then you feel very good but when prem is there if a Mm. Krishna will speak some uh, praise to Shrimati Radhika, then she will a pinch in the heart. Oh, why? Because when there is love there, then respect is not shown by respect, but respect is shown by disrespect. Mm. And to show respect means that you become neutral. And where there's neutrality, there's no love. Stotra me eva tatastatam. And if one's beloved will criticize, then you feel oh, it's very funny, and you become overwhelmed. In this world, if if one's husband or wife or one's spouse will the, criticize you, then what happens? You become upset. Why? No love. In Brindavan, Priya yadi man kore kore bhatsan vedas tu ti hoy ti hari he se moraman. Because if the gopis they criticize me, they call me lampat chudo mani, you press jewel of debauches, parastri jewel, you thief of others' wives, <laughs> and they criticize me with harsh words. Then Krishna is very so delighted. He forgets about all the prayers of Brahma and Shiva and Vedic mantras. He wants to hear these sweet words. So Prayam is like this. Doshe na shay tam gune na guru tam, and if Radhika will see a fault in Krishna. But his faults don't make her love go down, and if she sees a good quality in Krishna, his good qualities don't make the love go up. Why? Prema swara sikasika sitiram bikridati prakya. This prema has its own life, and that's the meaning of a holy to keep causeless. The prema has its own life. It simply wants to please Krishna, not to judge him. Mati, one's intelligence. Mati always looks at the person, measures them, and then, depending on what good qualities one sees, to that degree, we think I like him. So first, there's calculation and measurement, and afterwards, love will come to that degree. But the Rati, actual love, just loves, and then looks at the qualities afterwards and doesn't care. That is spontaneous. So, Brindavan is like that. But for the heart to become immersed fully in that frame, it is not for those who are, whose mentality is entangled in the worldly anxieties. One poet, Rasikutangs, he said a very beautiful kabya and poem. He said, "Da pitam amritam maya dina nishakrita." अंतरे वनागमा विरोधिता बतकता नासित पते ना पुन्या संपुतम निजा शिरा शिवा आपायतम मुद्धा भविता ही यते ममा मनो ग्राथे अस्पदं He said, Alas, alas! I have not drunk nectar between the sun and the moon. I have not protested the return of Sita and Ram to Ayodhya. I have not dipped my jata, my locks, matted locks, in the Ganga, and begun to offer my head to Lord Shiva. But still, I am thinking I want to attain Krishna Prem. Alas, alas, it's completely futile. So kavya is means the meaning is in the dhwani, not in the direct words, but in the suggestion of the words. सुमाधुरध्वनि करे जटा सकी गान। In the morning, this 
the manjuris, they come to the kunj and they look inside, then they speak to each other. Mm. And their words are all full of sweet dwani. Mm, dwani, sweet implications. So here, I have not drunk nectar between the sun and the moon, means I was not like a Rahu. You know when the demons and demigods were churning the ocean of milk, then the, after some time, Mohini Morti, she appeared there and she offered to distribute the nectar to solve the quarreling between the demons and demigods. But she was just charming the demons with her smile and she was serving out the nectar to all the demigods. So then Rahu, he was very, thought, he was very smart, disguised himself as a, as a demigod and sat in between the sun god and the moon god waiting in the row. And then when Mohini Moti was giving the nectar to him, the son of Musa, hey, hey, he's, a, he's not one of us, he's a demon. So then Lord Ajit by his chakra cut off the head of Rahu. So Rahu has his head cut off. Then he's saying, Vanagama Virodita Batakritana Asitapate. I never objected to the return of Sita and Ram to Ayodhya. Why? Because when Sita and Ram came back to Ayodhya, one day Ram was in disguise and he was going around his kingdom to see what is the mentality of the citizens. It's a duty of the king. And one washerwoman was coming back late at night and her husband had locked the door. You can't come in. She said, oh, let me in, let me in. He said, no, 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 no. You, you have been out after sunset. And so according to the Vedic culture, I will not accept you again. She said, oh look, Sita was away from Ram for so many days and he took her back. He said, yes, I'm not like that Ramachandra. I follow Dharma. Mm -hmm. So when Lord Ram heard this, he was very sad. And this is what made him decide, I will be used as a poor example uh, by the people. And if persons don't have faith in me, then how can the king reign? So I have to do the right thing and send Sita Devi to the forest. And he sent Sita Devi to the ashram of Valmiki Rishi. But that washerman, for his wickedness, in his next life he was also a washerman. But he was the washerman of Kamsa. <laughs> and when Krishna came to Mathura and asked, Oh, can you give me this cloth? He said, No, this cloth is for, Kam for Kamsa Maharaj. Then Krishna, also he lost his head. <laughs> so Rahu lost his head. The person who... Uh, protested Ram's return, lost his head. But the poets say, oh, I did not sit between the sun and the moon. I did not protest. I st that means I still have my head. So how will I get Prem if I still have my head? <laughs> to have a head means that you are preoccupied with your worldly necessities, luxuries, security, and survival. And as long as you are preoccupied with these things, you cannot attain this very fine, beautiful, nectarian brain. Huh? So I said, oh, I did not bathe my, dip my jata in the Ganges and offer to Lord Shiva. Who was that? Vrikasur. Vrikasur was worshipping Lord Shiva. And he dipped his hair in the Ganga to purify it and then he was about to cut off his head and give it to Lord Shiva. But then Lord Shiva appeared and gave him the benediction. That whose, who, who, whoever head, whose ever head you will touch, then it will explode. So then when he received this benediction, he thought, I'll try it out on you first, Shiva. <laughs> so he was chasing Shiva all over the universe. No one could save him. So finally Krishna came in the form of a very charming Brahmin boy, and he smiled. He said, oh, why are you running here and there? Don't you know that Shiva is such a liar? <laughs> he says so many things. He didn't give you a benediction. You look foolish going here and there, thinking you had, you, he didn't give you the benediction. Why do you embarrass yourself? Just go to a private place. You can test for yourself. Just on, touch your hand to your own head. You'll see nothing will happen. <laughs> so then being charmed by the beauty of the smile of Sri Krishna, because of that, yeah, why should I embarrass myself in public? <coughs> <laughs> and his head blew up. <laughs> so the poet is saying, hmm, I did not sit between the sun and the moon. I did not protest the return of Sita and Ram Tayodhya. And I did not try to offer my head to Shiva to get such a benediction. And because of this, why do I think that I will ever attain this brain? Like Ausik Goswamis. 
Sanatan Goswami was the Prime Minister in the Empire of Nabu Hussain Shah. Rupa Goswami was the Personal Secretary to the Emperor. But what did they do? Chaktwa turn on Mashay Shamandala Pati Srainim Sadat Uchtavat Butwa Dina Ganesha Ko Karunaya Ko Pin the Kantasuto Gopi Bhava or Samrit Abdila Hari Kalola Magno Mahu Vande Rupa Sanat and Ora Guru Gos. Leaving the company of all the powerful and affluent persons, hmm? they went to Brindavan, taking only a torn quilt and a copin. And then, Gopi Bhava Samrit Abdillahi, they were diving and surfacing again and again in endless waves of the nectar of Braja Gopi's love. Vande Rupa Sanatana Ora Gopala They are the example. See, Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, Traigunya Vishaya Veda, Nistraigunya Bhavajana, Nidvanga Nitya Sattva Asto, Nir Yoga Ksemya Atmavan. Traigunya Vishaya Veda. Hey, Arjun, forget about all these yagyas and everything in the Vedas. This is dealing with three gunas. Nidvanga Nitya Sattva Asto. Be free from all the dualities and dualistic thinking of this world. Near yoga ksemya. Don't worry about your maintenance and your protection. Atmavan, be situated in your atma. Ananyas chintayantumam ye jana pariupasate. Tesham nityabiyuktanam yoga ksema baham yaham. Those who are absorbed in thinking of me continuously, how will they survive? They don't have to worry. This is not their headache, it's my headache. <laughs> Krishna said, I, whatever they need, I will prepare this and I will carry it myself to them. Like Sri Chaitanya Mahapu in Jagannath Puri. Snana darashana bojan deya swahavoy kumrera chakariena satata birai. How his life was going on? He did not even know. He was waking up, he was taking bath, he was going to the temple, he was taking prasada. It was only deya swabhav, the nature of his body. But inside, he was completely absorbed in remembrance of the Leela of Sri Krishna. And Swarup Damdaga Swami used to recite all, all, Rasa Panchajai, all the verses, five chapters of the Rasa Leela. Mahaprabhu would become maddened, absorbed in the Leela. So, Prem is very, very contrary. But this high level of Prem, oh, it will, will not come to those who are always the preoccupied with the bodily conception of life and worldly thoughts. This frame is full of so many reverses. Mm -hmm. Just like it is said, you should not offer anything to Krishna which has been tasted first. But when Mother Yashoda makes hot milk for Krishna, oh Lala come here. And then she oh perhaps it's too hot for him. And she, she sips first just to check. Okay, it's cool enough. And then she gives. All Vedas say, Satya Bada, Satyam Bada, speak the truth. But in Vrindavan, everyone is lying. Yeah? When Krishna had eaten dirt, his mother, open your mouth. Ah, uh, na, na amba. Oh, mother, I have not eaten dirt. But your friends, are, oh, they're all, those friends are all lying. Hmm? Why is Krishna saying this? Yeah? Because he's afraid of his mother. Hmm? He's completely, he has no clue that he's Bhagavan. He's just a baby and he's worried that his mother may punish him. And also out of friendship, Pranay, such Sakuras with his friends, he can tell, they're all, they're all lies, all liars. What to speak of Krishna, even Mother Yashoda can lie. One day, little Krishna said, Oh Mother, today I'm going to follow a Kadasi. Mother Yashoda said, What? And she went to her friends. There must be some enemy in my house. Who told my son about Akadasi? <coughs> Who is that? Uh, she's always worried that Krishna's not eating enough. And now he wants to follow Akadasi. Hmm? Which, one of, which one of you is my enemy and told my Lala about Akadasi Bharat? Uh, Krishna said, Oh, Mother, now because it's Akadasi, I'm going to take bath in the Jamuna. Mother said, oh, that, don't go to the Jimun. I've prepared very nice warm water for you and fragrant oils. You stay at home and take a bath here. Oh, but Mother, I want... Hmm? She's, then she thought, I have to 
make up something to stop him from going. See, don't you know? Now is autumn time there, the leaves are fallen from the trees, and under the dry leaves on the bank of Jamuna, there are very ferocious birds like Bakasura waiting to gobble up little boys like you. So don't go there. You stay here and take baths. I have made nice warm water for you. Satyavartam Satyaparam Satyati Satyam. He said, Krishna is the Mm, the absolute truth is the embodiment of all truth. But he is lying. Mother Yashoda is lying. This is the nature of Prajapraim. Makes everything become in reverse. Mm. By the influence of this Prem, even mm, meeting becomes separation. And separation becomes meeting. Now little Krishna has grown up. And he's always very anxious to meet with Simati Radhika. So he went out into the forest and there on the bank of Jamuna, do you know that place? Dear Samir. <coughs> Krishna was decorated in a beautiful garland, the Banamala, all the way down to his feet. And he had decorated himself very beautiful because he's about to meet with his very new beloved, the daughter of Brishu Banamaraj, secretly. He's waiting. Tira Sumi Dehi Jamhum Nati Dehi Bosati Bani Bandamali Patati Patatri Vichalati Patri Shankit Bhavadupayanam Rachayati Shayanam Sachakita Nayanam Pasyati Tava Pantanam Pasyati Tava Pantanam Dear Samir, a very gentle breeze is blowing, carrying the fragrance of flowers. And Sri Krishna has arrived at the Kunj early, and Radhika is a bit late. But Krishna is very optimistic. Good. This will give me some extra time to decorate the Kunj. So Krishna is now like Vasak Sajya, like the heroine, but he's the hero and he's decorating, making a nice arrangement of flowers on petals on the bed. Hmm? And Patati Patatri, when he hears a, a, a bird land on the branch of a tree and some leaves fall outside, he thinks, ah, is Radhika coming? I haven't finished decorating the bed yet. And he runs outside and then he looks down the path with great anticipation. Oh, she's not coming, it was a bird. I still have time to finish my decorations. And he goes back inside. And then he's decorating again. And then finished. And then he's coming outside and looking down the path. And every moment seems like thousands of years ago. When is she coming? When is she coming? Long time passed and she did not come. <laughs> what is the nature of this praying? Stavra janga madeki na deki taramorti savatohoi nija ishta deva spurti. In separation, one begins to see one's ishta deva is present. So just as Krishna was. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Then he looked and saw. Munindra Brinda Bandite Tri Loka Shoka Hari Prasanna Bhaktra Pankaji Nidunja Bhuvilasi Rajendra Bhaktra Prasanna Bhakta Pankaje with a beautiful smiling face. Brajendra Banu Nandini, the daughter of Brishu Banu Maharaj. Krishna saw that she, she was not there. It was only his spurti vision due to intense separation. Because this brain makes separation into meeting. When Krishna saw Radhika, 
he was face was a blossoming and he wanted to talk to her but she turned around and she was leaving she thought what do I do and then he, he looked up and down the path he saw now actually Radhika was coming Lalita was bringing Radhika down that path upon which his eyes had been fixed for a long time but due to separation Krishna saw that Radhika was with him so now when he looked down the path and Radhika was actually coming with Lalita then he, he said oh Radhika don't go come here you must see this you must see this hmm? look at this this is quite hilarious look at your friend Lalita what a cheetah she is See, Krishna called Radhika close to him. He said, just look there. By force, Lalita Saki has captured my friend Subal and decorated him in your cloth. And now, just to tease me, Lalita is bringing Subal here and keeping him just nearby. Hmm? Because she's thinking that I'll see her coming with you. Hmm? And you're keeping there, and then she'll come and say, Oh Krishna, Radhika has come to, come on. And then I'll come, and then I'll see it's Lalita, and then she'll laugh at my expense. Hmm? Oh Radhika, why does Lalita do this? Why does she do these things? I think that even an unintelligent person never does some activity without a purpose. So the only purpose of this activity of your Saki Lalita the only purpose they can be is because she wants to do the prakash to manifest the extent of her own deceitful skills. <laughs> Radhika, just look what's happening. My friend Subal is very simple hearted and he's very faithful to me. And he doesn't want to go along with the plan. He's made his name Subal successful. Su means beautiful and Bal means strength. Though Lalita was holding him by the hand by forces, pulled his hand out of the hand of Lalita. And he's arguing with her and refusing to go another step. Because of his faithfulness to me, he's my good friend. <laughs> it's very sweet because actually, this is, Lalita is really bringing Radhika. Hmm? But what happens, Radhika really wants to meet with Krishna, but because her bhav is so uh, vakrim, hmm? Swami said, even though Radhika's love is so pure, it's so beset with duplicity. So as Radhika comes closer and closer to Krishna, then she says, Oh Lalita, I've changed my mind, I want to go home, take me back at once. And then the Lita's arguing, and, and she swear, I take an oath, I swear on my life that you will meet with Krishna now after all we've been through. And so now Radhika and Lalita are having an argument because Lalita, because Radhika lost her nerve in the last moment because it's very, it's very dangerous all this parakia stuff. <laughs> so actually, Radhika and Lalita are having an argument just in the distance, but because Krishna, in his separation, saw that Radhika was with him, he's thinking that Lalita is bringing Subal and making a plan. He's making a plan. He says, Radhika, look, I have a plan. We shall not fall for their trick. They will fall for our trick. You just hide there in the darkness of the kunj. And when the leader comes here with Subal, you come up from behind and tie her anchal in such a way that she's trapped and she cannot get away. Hmm? And in this way, we'll kidnap Lalita and we'll have a laugh at her expense instead of her, she having a laugh at my, my expense. Hmm? So in this way, Krishna was making plans with his purity of Radharani. <laughs> in the meantime, Radharani is arguing with Lalita. <laughs> this is why you have to lose your head before anyone can experience this prayer. Hmm? So then, see, Krishna said to Radhika, Oh Radhika, just as today you have come out of the control of Lalita and you have disobeyed Lalita and independently you've come to meet with me please again and again always come and meet with me then the sporty of Radhika disappeared why? because this is impossible 
Krishna's only wishful thinking. He's thinking that Radhika has come alone to meet. This is not possible. I'm sorry. Radharani has 25 divine qualities, prominent. And of those, one of them is, mm, it is called mm, Saki Pranayita Vashaha. That Radhika is not independent. She's controlled by the love of Lalita and Vishaka. They decide what to do and where to go. And Radhika goes along with that. If she doesn't go along with it, Lalita will mm, give her a very stiff talking to and make her do it, even if she doesn't want to do it. So, but Krishna was, he was, it was just a fantasy for Krishna. The Radhika has come without Lalita, an independent of Lalita. Oh, please do it again. <laughs> Don't be under her control and then the sport to disappear. So this Praja Prahim is like that. Full of Viroda, full of Viparayai, full of the contradictions. And those who will hear Srimad Bhagavatam from the Brajrasik Vaishnava, in the bhava of Sri Rupa Goswami, then the rays, very soft and gentle rays, the vritti of Ladini Shakti, Navi Burya Mano Brito will descend like an avatar into one's heart. Should the Sattva Vishay Shatma Prema Suryang Susamyabak Ruchibhistha Masinya Kridaso Bhava Ujate Vishuddha Sattva pure transcendental existence like the rays of the sun of Prem melt the heart and cause one to tremble with anxiety. When will I meet my Ishtadev? When will I render a very anukul seva to my Ishtadev? And when will I have a suridbhav, heart-to-heart friendship with my Pran Kishore? Radha Krishna Pran Amor Jugala Kishore Ajiva na je marani gati arnahi. Oh Radha Krishna, you are my pran, I cannot live without you. You are my only destination in life and in death. This is called bhav. And when that bhav becomes more intense, then it becomes prayer. That is the foul, the fruit of hearing. Srimad Bhagavatam. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam. Vijay. Oh, Premanande. Vijay.